Hello again, I am Blunty. Now today I finally get to review something I've been salivating about, something I've been eagerly awaiting ever since it was first announced, ever since it was first teased that it was going to be announced actually. It's a video camera, it's from Sony, it's called the NEX VG10 and the reason I'm so excited about it as a guy who fiddles with cameras all day, every day basically, is the fact, well, you know how the, the digital SLRs, the, the really fancy ones, they've had sort of video functionality rolling into them over the past year, year and a half or so and some of them getting quite serious about it. and there are professionals out there using these digital SLRs cameras designed to take stills to do video because they've got huge imaging sensors on them and interchangeable lenses which gives you a lot more power for a lot less money than what you would have to spend on a dedicated video camera for those functions I mean you only have to look at the ridiculous rigs that, that these professional videographers who buy digital SLRs to use as video cameras have to bolt onto their equipment I mean the rails and rigs and focus pullers and microphone extra external re audio recorders and other screens and there's these stupid Frankenstein type of machines just to just to be able to take advantage of the beautiful video that digital SLRs can take but to get back all the all the compromised functionality they had to give up for going for a still camera that does a video instead of going for a proper video camera and that's what the Sony is it's all the good things about the video that digital SLRs can take in a proper video camera it's been designed from the ground up to be a friggin' video camera! And I've been wanting that for years, quite frankly, so that's, that's why I'm so excited about this damn thing. So, but anyway, enough of me rambling, let's, let's take a look at the camera itself. Let's take a look at some footage that I shot on my recent trip to San Fran with this camera and put it through its paces. Shall we? We shall. We're shalling right now. Okie dokie, so before we get to this, let's look at this. Let's take a look at the rundown on the camera hardware. The raw hardware looks like this. The imaging sensor is Sony's own Exmor APS-HD CMOS sensor, which will suck in a full 1080 HD, which it stores in the standard AVCHD file format, so it's easy to work with in any modern editing suite. And it'll snap 14.2 megapixel stills, and it slaps it all directly onto either an SD memory card, which are cheap and easy to get, or Sony's own Memory Stick Pro, of course. The kit lens that comes with it is an 18 to 200 mm to give you the most flexibility right out of the box. But, of course, it's a standard E-mount lens, so you can easily bolt on other, more specialized lenses. The microphone is actually not a microphone, but four of them, arranged in a quad capsule spatial array, which basically means, to de-nerd that for you, you get a very clear, very directional stereo recording. You've also got the ability to use your own external microphones through a standard 3.5mm jack, so if you wanted to go handheld, easy peasy. Most of the controls sit protected inside the LCD panel. They're easy enough to use and don't feel especially fiddly. Everything seems sensible enough. The main jog wheel used for cycling through the options and settings works as you'd expect it to. The controls and menu system aren't fantastic, I've got to be honest, but they're not broken either. To be really honest, I've never ever found a camera from anybody that has a truly superb control and menu interface. They all seem just a little bit janky, but in this case, it does the job quickly and with a minimum of fuss, and all the important bits are quick to access, and that's the important bit. The controls for power, starting and stopping recording, and switching between still and video mode sit under your left thumb exactly where you expect them to be, exactly where they should be, and I never once had a problem with accidental activation, which is an issue I've had with some other cameras I've used. The battery mounts sensibly and is both fast and easy to replace, even while mounted on a tripod, which infuriatingly not all camera manufacturers think about. The battery I had for testing was the top-of-the-line version, which provided me with truly Herculean recording time. I was easily getting in excess of six and a half hours of video recording from a single charge. I nearly wept with joy. Your input and output options sit on the right side of the body, standard headphone jack for audio monitoring as you record, very important, a DC input jack of course for powering the camera or charging the battery, a HDMI output for plugging into a TV or monitor so you can check it out instantly, and of course a USB interface. Comfort wise, well that's where this camera starts to show some cracks in the armour. The grip itself is very comfortable, the strap is wide and soft, and the camera feels very nice in the palm. But between the weight of the camera and the angle that it forces my wrist into during actual use, to be honest, it 
became rather uncomfortable to use handheld for extended periods. Of course, use of a tripod or even a monopod would fix this issue easily, but the ergonomics is something I'd have liked to see a bit more time spent on. The zoom on the lens is manual, just like on a digital SLR camera. While normally you'd have some sort of rocker switch for powered zoom on a normal video camera, this can take some getting used to if you've used those rocker switches for many, many, many years as I have. But you do get used to it eventually, and it does actually give you more flexibility and control. But you do have to be more careful about introducing noise into your audio. Manual focus can also be controlled via a ring on the lens. Again, much like a DSLR. Like I said in the intro, this camera is more or less a DSLR designed to be a video camera first. And that means you get much more power and much more control when it comes to allowing fully manual video control. Unlike many DSLRs with add-on video modes, with the VG10 you get full, proper manual control over shutter speed, lens aperture, ISO sensitivity, white balance, etc, etc, etc for video recording. And autofocus works perfectly well in video mode too, which is frustratingly lacking in most of its DSLR brothers. It also works silently, another vital component to shooting video that is lacking in DSLRs. But enough about the nerdy bits, let's take a look at what happens when all this technology starts doing what it's designed to do. All of the footage and audio you're about to see are completely unaltered, no filters, no adjustments, no color correction, just pure straight out of the camera. And it was all shot on automatic mode to see just how smart the camera is about setting itself up so you can just get on with the job of shooting. Point it at something, press record, away you go. So there you go guys, that is the Sony NEX VG10. It's a seriously lovely camera for a seriously lovely price. Now, when I say that, I don't mean to say it's cheap, because it's not. And at the same time, while I say it's not cheap, it's not expensive either, because the value proposition of this camera, what you're paying for the bang you get out of your buck, is incredible. I don't think you could match it in a dedicated video camera that's on the market at the moment that provides the features that the Sony does at the price point it does, giving you the results that it does. It is an incredible starting point for this, this, this new range of 
of, of cameras where they take the, the guts from digital SLRs and rebuild them to be a proper video camera with none of the silly little compromises that people who shoot video on digital SLRs have had to deal with the last couple of years. But the real test, the real, the real honest test of, of this kind of review is if I had the money to buy myself one right now, would I put on a pair of pants and go to the store and buy one for myself? Yeah, I would. I mean, it really is seriously good value for money. And if you're doing video on a regular basis and you want the most power, the most flexibility, the, the best bang for buck you can get, and I love that term, I keep using it, this is the best you're going to get on the market at the moment. Nothing else comes close. Power, features, price, that it's it's got a little ball of awesome going on. And I'm sure the other manufacturers will be coming, bringing out cameras like this, but for now, the Sony is the pioneer in this little segment of the market, and it's going to explode hugely, I predict, because this is the way of the future for serious video cameras. <laughs> as, as a camera nerd, as a, as a gadget nerd, as a YouTuber, it, it gets me excited on so many levels. It gets me passionate and all revved up. I mean, this is camera sex as far as I'm concerned which is an unusual phrase to utter. But I'll end on that anyway, so thanks for watching. I'm Blunty, and I'll catch you next time. Catch you next time. See, I mistimed the salute. I got too wound up in thinking about the camera. It's in my dreams, seriously. I miss it. I had to send it back, because it was only a, a borrowed unit for review. I miss it still. With the quiet nights, I can hear it called to me. <laughs>